The bill for compensating the sub-postmasters and mistresses won't be picked up by the post office. Of course not. It'll be coming out of our taxes. So, to be clear, we will be directly paying for the failure of several corporations, many high-paid execs and lots of politicians. But it's hard to begrudge the recipients, obviously, and equally hard to believe that the government's line is going to hold. Let's just take Alan Bates, for example, the man who started it all. He loses his livelihood spends more than 20 years fighting round the clock for justice and gets only £75,000. So, what does that work out at? About 2p per hour of work? Good boy! For 15 years, horse riding has been Sarah's only escape from a reality she says she couldn't comprehend. She was never convicted of the crimes her former employer, the post office, accused her of and calls the £75,000 compensation she's now been offered a disgrace. It doesn't even begin to cover my losses. I've lost everything. I, ca I can't... I'm not financially stable. I've lost my business. Um, I've lost all my savings. I've lost my reputation. My life is shattered. Listening to evidence at the post office inquiry today was another former sub-postmistress who also not only lost everything, but has been left feeling angry about the response. Would it be OK for me to lock you out of your house and give you a cheque for 75000 That's what I felt like saying, without prejudice at all. But yes, I, I felt quite insulted by that. So how does the compensation scheme work? Well, there are actually three different ones. Sarah and Shazia are both part of the group who first exposed the scandal when they took the post office to court. There are 555 of them and they've each been offered an upfront payment of £75,000, all except 62 who were convicted in court, which means they can apply for a much bigger sum. There were 983 sub-postmasters convicted of criminal offences between 1999 and 2015, which works out at more than one a week. 95 have already been acquitted and the rest have now been told their convictions will be quashed at some time later this year, at which point the government says they will be eligible for a £600,000 payout. There is one other scheme for people who weren't convicted or part of the civil court case. They can apply for different amounts of compensation if they can provide proof of what they lost and that Horizon was to blame. So far, there have been 2,745 eligible claims. All I heard the judge say was nine months. Noel Thomas, whose story was told in the recent ITV drama, was sent to prison for false accounting in 2006. His conviction was eventually overturned, but he says he now wants the people who were in charge to be punished. I've been sent to jail. He says that I've got to fight for more. I say, hit them in the pockets. Uh, take, take their property off them, take their money, take their bonuses off them. Hit them in their pockets. Noel is one of many who are asking why it took a TV drama to get the government's attention and who are not yet satisfied with its response. Chloe Keedy, News at 10.